Eli Lilly launching Lilly Direct, where patients can get the company's obesity, diabetes, and migraine meds sent to their home with a doctor's prescription. The new program includes the company's new weight loss drug, ZepBound, which lists for more than $1,000 for half price with $550 without insurance and a copay of $25 with insurance. Uh, joining us now, Michael Yee, senior biotech analyst at Jefferies. Michael, it's great to have you here. Uh, I know you already kind of liked Lilly, based on a lot of the, the fundamentals and the, the efforts in obesity, what do you think of today's news as a way of, uh, of addressing the market? Yeah, well, good to be here. Good morning. I mean, I think on one side, it's important to understand that this is uh, the beginning and the early cycle uh, for Lilly and others to continue to grow the obesity market. And importantly, getting access to the drugs is critical. Certainly, I know Lilly is putting in huge emphasis on that. Uh, this program, of course, is interesting. I wouldn't say it's game-changing, of course, but it's incremental in getting access to people uh, online, if you read some of the details, without having to necessarily go in to specifically see a doctor in the office. And does it also reflect the fact that insurance companies are slow to, to adopt these things and approve them uh, in, in as broad a way as Lily would like? Well, I think it's a process. Uh, to be clear, it doesn't happen overnight. I think today's program and others that are going to follow are related to uh, getting access and getting awareness and getting access to uh, doctors. Uh, just to be clear, uh, payer access is opening up slowly and surely this year. Remember, Lilly's drug for obesity, ZepBound, just got approved recently. And uh, so that access is going to open up and it's going to take time. I'd also point out to viewers, and they may not know this, the supply uh, and access to all of this certainly is also opening up, and that's a, a critical part that is also not so well understood. That has been an issue for sure. You know, we also mentioned uh, that Lilly, on uh, in a separate front, is going after the cosmetic use or off-label use or, in their mind, fraudulent uh, use uh, through some providers of these medications just for cosmetic purposes. Does that do anything in terms of your estimate of, of how large this market can get if it truly just goes to those uh, that have critical health problems related to obesity? Well, uh, to be clear, the vast majority of the use, and certainly if you looked at uh, the prescriptional use through a doctor, has to meet certain criteria with uh, uh, weight, BMI, and other criteria. Obviously, out-of-pocket pay through a physician if it was to get administered uh, for, shall you say, cosmetic use or not necessarily meeting the specific high BMI uh, weight is a proportion of that as well. Uh, long term, again, I think the obesity market is so big, just the penetration of the critically obese population is also very important for it. Pricing as well, I think, critical. So all of that uh, plays into a multi-year factorium. So for investors, this is still the relative early cycle. The drug just got approved. And we'd also say it's not great for Lilly, but also Amgen, a, a, call, a stock we've been telling people to buy and it's been great, is also the second player coming around the corner. Yeah, I was going to get to that. So last year, the market treated Lilly and Novo as just basically the only two names you wanted to have a, a ownership of because they were playing these, this strong theme. So you think it's going to splinter out from there? Why, you know, it can move the needle on Amgen already? Yeah. So, look, I think there's two themes. One is to play the leaders, play the folks who are obviously growing, Lilly being the dominant player, and that's obviously been a great stock. Uh, Jeffries, we're still recommending that stock. Uh, we believe there's significant upside as well from Amgen. We just raised our price target yesterday. They have a monthly or possibly quarterly, and there's big data coming from Amgen later in 2024. Been super bullish on that. That certainly could move it because there's not much in the consensus numbers. Obviously, for Lilly, huge numbers out there. For Amgen, not a lot. We still see more data. So for investors, we need the data, of course, a little bit riskier, but there's huge upside there on Amgen if the data looks hey. good. Michael, there's so many interesting aspects here, and I know that the, the pharmacy benefit managers aren't your, your wheelhouse, but if this is really Lilly kind of declaring war on the pharmacy benefit managers, is that something that goes well for the pharmaceutical companies? Is it something that potentially backfires if they're frenemies? How would you play that out? Because this is really a shot across the bow. bow. Uh, you know, I, I think it depends on how you look at it. I think that the key here is Lily's trying to get access. I agree that the payer uh, plans are slow to get going. You can imagine, of course, Becky, that that not going to turn it on overnight, right? There's a huge cost to that. And if you go look back at 
the hep C days or some of these big markets that opened up very quickly, a lot of the budget constraints and planning for the PBMs gets all out of whack, and that's a problem for their earnings. So I think they want to manage that. Here, Lilly obviously wants to get access through out-of-pocket. So this is people who also want to play out-of-pocket. I think it's important, uh, a, a difference here. And uh, I wouldn't say it's a shot across the bow. I think it's a long-term market, and that's why the PBMs, I think, are keeping slow.